So I think this is what I get the most excited about a project is when I see digging happening. We are starting to dig the pond. We got the area behind me with the urns kind of all buttoned up. We still have to foam and do all the detail work, but right now we're gonna start digging the pond so that we can keep plenty of people busy because we can't have all seven of us all working on this. Really, really, really want to get this seam done and get the walls started, that bottom course in the pond so that guys can start rolling with that while we're figuring out the spider web of plumbing that needs to happen right here. Okay, so we ended the day yesterday, day one on the project. It was actually only about a half day of digging, getting this area prepped, all the elevations set. Today we are going to start our brick wall using this Unilock wall stone. A couple things we need to consider today is one, obviously make sure that the subgrade is the level that we need it to be so that our bottom course will run straight and run level from one end to the other and we don't have any elevation change making for a wavy wall or a wall that slopes one direction or the other. We also want to take into consideration the plumbing that's going to go into this as well. So we're going to bring in four three inch lines into this area. We're going to bring it up high over the liner so we don't have to do any bulkheads, but we'll bring it high enough above water level to where we can just come up over the liner inside of this trough area. So I'll show you that when we get to that point, but the guys are going to go ahead and get their string line set up and figure out where our six foot inner diameter or inner width will be so that we have nice straight lines all the way across. It'll help them really set this thing up so that they can just kind of cruise as they go. this probably 85% complete in through here. The excess liner kind of rolled up in here. Now we're gonna start digging what is going to be more of our pond over here. We've got some big aqua blue boulders sitting back on the other side of the machine that are gonna frame out this little peninsula in through here. We'll put a couple accent boulders in through here. Then where Josh Duffy is at is where we're going to have kind of the outermost section of our Stack Slate urn collection. So there'll be a trio of large urns, a trio of medium urns, and then we've got a surprise for you with a jumbo urn way back over there. So really, really excited with the progress we've made. We're going to have to seam some liner together, meaning this piece is going to have to attach to the one that is holding back all the dirt and keeping all the water inside the pond over in the urn area. And then we'll have to probably seam another section for the main section of the pond, which is that big rectangular section over there. So we're just going to dig this back, get some of this dirt out of here and put some rocks in before we seam any of this stuff. I think we're making good progress. Like I said, I'm glad that we have this wall knocked out today because that was kind of a time killer. Now we can have people work behind me in here and really get those stack slate spheres put together while other guys are working on this over here behind me. Everybody, we are back. It is day two and a half out here. You can see behind me, Jack set up the GoPro to give you some beautiful time-lapse footage of what we're gonna do with this Stack Slate urn collection area over here. This is the area that we built. Dan and Steve did a fantastic job on building the brick walls. You can see three of them. There's actually four. There's another one snuck back there. We've got four three-inch lines. That will be where all the plumbing and stuff is going to come in. We brought it down on the bottom course because we will end up burying all of the piping and that spider web of pipe that's going to each sphere with gravel and rock and all that stuff. So you won't even see that this stuff's here. This will all be a collection of spheres. And then we get over into this area that will have not one, not two, not six, but seven stack slate urns. We have three large, three mediums, and a jumbo that will sit back up in the back over here. So really excited about this. We've got the first urn set. Now it's time to bring in one of these massive aqua blue boulders just off of the side to help scale that urn down as well as hold back a lot of that soil that's gonna be over here. So we're gonna try and focus our energy on this 
this area in through here, giving them a place to continue that wall up to. So this will all be rock work in through here. And then you'll have a bunch of plants back behind it. So just trying to paint the picture for you. This is a massive rock. It's gonna test all the limits of our machine, but I think we got it. Once we get it in there, it ain't coming back out until we demo this sucker. Let's go. with the progress today. We got this entire back edge done. We've just got to finish up our brick wall, which will cut into that rock right there. We're just gonna have a bunch of evergreens all in through here. So I like how tall this rock is in comparison to the large urn. We've got a spillstone here and there. That's that jumbo urn exclusively here at Aquascape. So it looks enormous right now, but we will fix that just with some rock work and that kind of stuff. We've got to drop a bib liner in along the back because we're a little close on the edge and we want to make sure that we capture all that splash but i love this waterfalls that's framed out with the urn and then this big slanting rock right there we're going to swap out this medium urn with a large urn bring it in here we'll probably cut it down a little bit so it's not the same height as this one so maybe we'll take off the bottom section so it sits about the same height as the medium but we want something a little bit wider and that is about a foot wider than that one so we just want some more mass on that corner we dropped in this peninsula rock here this really sets an angle coming back into the pond going this way and then really we only have about three more urns left to set up in here and then we'll have a four foot tall brick wall hiding all of this stuff so the top of that brick wall will be about here when you're standing over on the deck and walking along the bridge it's not until you get to about that point on the bridge where you can look back over into this area and see everything that this area has to offer and then we've also dry set all of our spheres in through here we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and there's an 11th one back there. We have 11 spheres in this area. They are all gonna be plumbed. Now you can understand why we have four pumps coming in here to be able to push all the water necessary to make this look incredible. I also wanted to point out the height of these spheres. The top of these spheres are just barely above this area and through here. But the reason we are setting them that low is because we want where the two spheres match up at the outermost circumference of the spheres, that's where that water is gonna rip through. So we're gonna block off this area and through here, we'll build up with some aqua blues, but we really want water to rip in between these things and really get that push of water. So it should be a really, really neat effect. We'll probably drop another rock in coming down like this to help block that water up. Just super, super excited with how it's turning out. This wall will have one more course, I believe, coming off of it, and we'll dead end over there. So a perpendicular section of wall, and then we'll put a nice coping on it, and then that liner will come up the back, and then that will have all evergreen Christmas trees and then trees that way. This looks absolutely stunning. I can't wait till that's finished. But we're gonna go ahead and knock off there today. Really, really pumped again. I can't say that enough. Team did a great job. We managed to get a lot done today. We got our bridge done, and I'll show you that, but just looks awesome. Good morning, everybody. The guy's already hopping right in. Jeez, they already got that entire patio demoed. So before I got to explain what was going on, but this whole patio over here needed to come out because we we're gonna build a brand new one. So the guys are working in a chain and just passing all those bricks back and forth, palletizing them so we can get them wrapped up, get them out of here and make way for the new patio that's coming in. Meanwhile, kind of move some stuff back around. You can see we have some paint on the ground. We're gonna slide that jumbo urn over to where that white line is. And then we made room for a large urn over there where that circle is. We're gonna dig that down so it's nice and flat. Then we'll put another large urn right about here. And then we'll have a series of mediums down in front over here. So we're gonna focus our energy on getting this area buttoned up. Then what we'll do is we have to run a seam all the way across, go ahead and start excavating out our pond. We've got a lot of stuff going today. We're gonna finish that wall. Hopefully get started on all the plumbing over here in the sphere area. And we're just gonna probably divide and conquer today as the day moves along. But right now we're working as one. And then after that gets accomplished, then we're gonna go ahead and split up into teams and start working on other stuff. So goals for today, get the stack slate urn area completed, or at least 90% completed so that we can just do detail work and touch up work while the pond itself is getting dug. Work on the sphere area back behind me and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully start digging this pond today. That would be a huge, huge boost to my confidence in meeting our deadline. That's the goals for the day. Hopefully we'll get them accomplished. Let's keep going. Right now what we're doing 
doing is we're securing some of these urns in place. I want you to notice that I have a piece of inch and a half rigid pipe. This is our stand pipe that will come up through the top of the urn. Also notice I've already fished my light cable through here. I took that down through the bottom of the urn and why don't you come on over here. The light cable goes this direction under the urn, this way, but then our plumbing is actually running up inside the liner, goes underneath the bottom of the urn and then it's gonna snake up in through here and then we'll cover it all back in through there. So we're gonna have about three or four inch and a half lines like a spider web in through here. So when you're excavating and knowing you're gonna run your plumbing inside the liner, make sure you dig out deep enough to be able to cover up that pipe with gravel and that kind of stuff as you go through. You don't want that pipe to be seen when water's flowing and all that stuff. Just make sure that it's down below the bottom of your spill rocks by a good three to four inches so that you can cover it with gravel. So now that we've got this, I'm gonna finish putting the rest of the weight in the bottom because I'm gonna have a significant amount of weight pushing back against it in through here and I don't want this thing to shift forward. I'll still end up getting a rock or two down in front to kind of hold this together. But as we're putting these cobbles in, you wanna make sure that the standpipe stays right dead center in the middle so that when we drop this over the top, it slides down nice. that you want to make sure that this is right in the center is so that you're not having to fight this thing getting that lid right on top. So now we have a four and a half watt color changing light recessed in there. We use a three inch hole saw for this and what, a uh, inch and three quarter, a two inch hole saw for that. It's inch and a half pipe, but remember that inch and a half is inside diameter. So that's the ID or the inside diameter of the pipe. The reason Dan chose two inches is because you still have a quarter inch of thickness of your pipe. So if you have a quarter inch on each side, that adds an extra half inch ending up in the two inch hole saw bit. So a drill, a three inch hole saw bit, a two inch hole saw bit, and you can have an urn just like this. Jack and Steve, how are you guys coming on this wall? Good, using a contour gauge to measure out the shape of this rock. Oh, sweet. Putting it to the face of the cinder blocks, measure it out and use the concrete saw to cut out a nice. Is it working? Is that, yeah, it's is working it? really well. Nice. Um, so shout out to Dan for getting these. <laughs> nice. How's it fit, Jack? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. The problem we're running into is on the back of this rock doesn't match the face. So kind of got to contour it back as it goes and angle it. Should be a little tricky, but we'll get the saw and give her another go. Goofy looking rock right there. Make it work. So we are almost done plumbing all the urns. Looks like, are you guys going to bury them in there? Bye-bye. <laughs> like, oh my God. You okay in there? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, he is coming out, right? No, he's no. staying in. He's staying in there? <laughs> All right, well. We'll do this fountain together. All right, night night. <laughs> How's it look, Luis? There you are. Oh, careful, that's the same. Awesome. Very yeah. straight. Yeah. yeah, it's very straight. Awesome. Nice. So, in yeah. case you guys are wondering what the heck Luis is doing in here, we needed to make sure that this pipe right here, the stand pipe, was in the exact middle of this urn so that when they put that enormous top on, it slid down right over the top of it. So we We've got it flush cut so the water isn't shooting off to one side or the other. They've got an eight light, color changing light put in there. And we're just using this bag of gravel to kind of secure this pipe. And then no real need to go ahead and put all the rock in there because nothing is really going to move this at all. So you ready to get out of there? Okay, maybe give him a hand guys. Nice, nice work. All right, let's get that lid on. Do you guys fish that lighting cable through already? Yeah. Perfect. Nice. You're right there. There it is. There it is. Okay, now you gotta twist the whole thing. So the whole thing's gotta twist clockwise. Keep going, keep going. Good. Now twist it back. Yep. You got your tab in over there, Garrett, right in front of you? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, the nice is over here. Nice. We put a little bit of foam on the top the last time we used this in a home show. We're gonna keep that bead where it's at. And the reason for that is we want a majority of that water to all come off the front of this. So we're actually damming up the back side, forcing more of that water to come off of the front, which is going to be seen from our main viewing areas, which is coming 
across the pond what will be a patio over here but that's why that ribbon of foam is sitting on top and it's slightly pitched forward so we got jack and dan over here finishing up one of the medium urns that's going to sit out by itself out in the middle of the pond we shifted it off to the left so you can still see that waterfall right behind dan as you're walking through but until you get to about here once you get to here, this will all be blocked off with trees. So I didn't want to push it too far to the right and block that whole waterfall, but I also didn't want to push it too far to the left to where it's sitting up against that big rock directly behind the tripod. So we brought it out. I want water all the way around. It'll give it a really neat effect. You've got Jack D over here finishing up the brick wall. He's carving all of those bricks into place to come around that piece of bluestone right there. It looks so stupid awesome. His attention to detail is second to none. There's going to be two more courses on finish course right there. So he's going to continue that and then do that top course and then we'll put a coping all the way around raising this up there will also be a coping running along this course in through here we're going to drop another rock in on top of this wall right over here to help change the shape of this but really really pleased with how this is turning out As you guys know, we brought in tropicals and interior plants a bunch in the past to complete the landscape of the Sandbox Studio creations for all the different artists of the year. This year is no exception. We brought in interior tropical gardens, and this is Holly, right? Yes. So I'm excited because this is what really turns our design into something magical with all the softscape stuff. So I'm excited to see what you have in here. Is it all for us? It's not all for us. It's not quite. I have a little bit in the truck for okay. another job site. Okay. I'm going to pop up there. All right. So oh, nice. Are those palmettos back there? Rika palms. Rika palms. Rika palms. Some majesty palms. Those are majesty palms mm -hmm. right there. And Rika palms. Those are shuffleras. That's a marginata. Is that a dracaena? It is. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool to have something a little bit different because we're just going to have a bunch of Christmas trees. So to be able to have something like this, just for a little bit of pop of color, you can see the variegation where you've got the red, pink, white, and even with the green, this looks super nice. And then I think all the boxes probably have ferns. Pothos. Let's see what we got in here. Cool. So nice. Then Holly, what are some care instructions for us, like to be able to take care of these? Or what would you recommend to our viewers out there with, with interior plants? I, I actually think taking care of tropical plants is really easy. Yep. There's a simple way. You don't want to water a plant that's already slightly damp. 90% of the roots are on the very bottom of the pot. Water kind of sometimes stays at the bottom. Sure. And that's where the roots are. We don't want the roots to rot off. So the biggest problem that people make is overwatering plants very frequently. It's okay for plants to be slightly dry at the top. You don't want to tease them. So the trick is to just only water a plant when the soil is really dry. Cool. Well, thank you so All much. Right. Is that everything? I think so. All right. I love the truck wrap too. It gives you a sense of warmth. You know, right now in the middle of January when it's 10 degrees outside. So tell us a little bit about your company. Well, the, actually the company's been in existence for over 30 years. It's a family locally owned company. Cool. And it's really specializing in live tropical plants, of course, but it's also about service. And we really feel that main thing that we can offer our clients, of course, is great quality, great customer service. Cool. Which you've obviously given to us for the last four or five years since we started our partnership together. So really, really appreciate it. it. looks like you guys do holiday decorating as we well do. as tropicals. We do. We just came off of that and it's a five to six weeks whirlwind of activity. We do some unique stuff. We've got antique sleighs. We oh, have cool. eight, nine foot full size polar bears. We have all kinds of really cool stuff that we actually That's do. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it is a lot of fun. That's awesome. So the, the easiest way to call you or, or get a hold of you is either at 866-4-A-PLANT or interiortropicalgardens.com. It is. Cool. It's great. Holly Thank you so much, all right? Have a great afternoon. Too. Thanks, Thanks for helping us out. So I think this is what 
I get the most excited about a project is when I see digging happening. We are starting to dig the pond, which means we hit kind of our benchmarks for the day. We got the area behind me with the urns kind of all buttoned up. We still have to foam and do all the detail work, but right now we're gonna start digging the pond so that we can keep plenty of people busy tomorrow because we can't have all seven of us all working on this at the same time. And I wanna get those, I really, really, really wanna get this seam done and get the walls started, that bottom course in the pond so that guys can start rolling with that while we're figuring out the spider web of plumbing that needs to happen right here, as well as back behind me, we have everything stubbed out, but we just have to figure out pumps and manifolds and all that stuff. So there's gonna be some, some kind of head scratching moments, but we're gonna go ahead and keep rolling, get the earth moved out of here so that we can go ahead and get our liner in and start those walls to really create that formal design. And those walls will also help us terminate some of the stuff happening off of the side of the urns, help us figure out where our, exactly our bridge is gonna go off of this peninsula, that kind of stuff. Obviously, only one machine is digging right now. We're gonna have another guy in the skidster because we are in a warehouse moving this dirt out of here while Dan makes a pile. While we're doing that, we're gonna start working on some of the coping over here as well as finishing off this section over here. We already have our four trunk lines run in at the bottom back over here at the end of this wall. So we're gonna try and start figuring out some of this plumbing. These spheres are gonna shift left, right, front, back a little bit, or not too terribly much. We already have it kind of set where we want them. Now we just have to figure out getting the lights in, getting them plumbed, and then figuring out how many are gonna go on each pump. So there'll be a three inch service line, feeding probably three urns, maybe four as we come through here. And we also have a fourth pump that will be an upflow just for some supplemental water flow as the water is twisting and turning through these spheres. Really pleased with the progress. It looks fantastic going that way. Once we have that area buttoned up, all the plumbing, we can start plugging in a bunch of those Christmas trees. You saw the tropicals and all the plants from earlier, but we really have to get this area excavated out, get our seam done so that we can start working on the rest of the walls and try and stay on track to meet our deadline of Thursday night this week before Greg has the big reveal and party for us as well as a bunch of other contractors. So we got our work cut out for us, but we got to keep moving. see we've got Garrett over here placing the coping stones. What we did is we folded that liner back up over the top of this course here. We put some structure bond underneath the liner and on top of, and then laid our coping right on top of this. So now, because this liner comes all the way up the back side of this wall, then horizontally is sandwiched between the coping and the top stone, theoretically, we can bring water level all the way up to here and this thing not leak. So that was the idea. And then back here, we will have a patio come right up to the edge of this coping stone. Looks really, really sharp and it's pretty straight too. 